Okay, so that brings us to gravity within our own Milky Way. So this is where our story becomes a little more interesting. Um, and the idea is that, well, if the universal law of gravity is really universal, then it doesn't just apply to solar systems, it also applies to stars around a galaxy's center, right? So Kepler and Newton should still be right. Their results should still hold. Um, but it's a little bit different in the galaxy because the sun is basically at a point and there's not a lot of stuff between the sun and the planets, actually like basically no, no stuff. Um, but in the galaxy's disk, it's a lot different because there's a lot of interstellar gas and dust, right? As we saw last week, that's what makes it so hard to see galactic center. Um, so this mass that's spread out within a disk, it does change the equations a little bit, but it turns out that we can, for the most part, still do a very good job at estimating the mass if we really just do assume that all of the mass that we're calculating is as if it's concentrated at a single point. So for example, if this uh, object here is you know, outside of this blue region, then we can calculate all the mass inside its orbit, closer to the center of its orbit, um, by calculating using this equation. So it's only the mass inside your orbit that matters to determine your orbital period. Um, the reason for that is a little bit complicated, but does go back to uh, Newton's formulation. Okay. Um, the other thing is that we generally assume that the galaxy is roughly circular. It has a roughly circular disk. And so we don't really need to worry about the semi-major axis, but we can, for the most part, assume that all the orbits are circular. So we'll replace our semi-major axis here with R, where R is going to be our distance from galactic center. So for the sun, that is going to be uh, eight kiloparsecs. All right. And the last thing is that if we go back to that idea of the rotation curve that we saw for the solar system, um, it's going to look a little bit different because there's not the same distribution of mass throughout the disk, right? The spiral arms are very dense. The regions between spiral arms are not very dense. So there's going to be regions where there's more mass inside an orbit and regions where there's less. All right. So the rotation curve for our galaxy is shown here out to 15 kiloparsecs. So again, we're looking at the orbital velocity in kilometers per second on the y-axis and the distance from the center of the galaxy in kiloparsecs on the x-axis. And the reason that we're measuring the orbital velocity instead of the orbital period is just, it's something that we can directly measure using the Doppler effect. Um, we could use this to figure out the orbital period, but it takes, you know, millions of years to orbit. So it's not something that we can measure directly. All right. Um, the radius of the visible part of the galaxy goes out to 15 kiloparsecs. So here we are at eight kiloparsecs. The visible kind of edge of the disk ends at 15. And there's basically, you know, no mass outside the disk within the disk. We know there's globular clusters above and below the disk, but those are you know, few in number, and so we're going to mostly ignore that. So basically, this should be all there is. So if we find something that orbits really far from the galaxy, and there are a few stars um, and um, globular clusters that orbit far from the disk, so we can use those objects. We can also use the um, clouds of gas that are at the very edge of the disk to measure the orbital velocity outside this area of a uh, disk that contains most of the glowing stuff, All right? And when we do that, um, this is what we expect to find is that the orbital period, just like our rotation curve for the solar system should get um, slower and slower as we get farther from the disk, All right? So this is the same relationship, the downward sloping curve. Um, and when we actually look at the rotation curve, we don't quite find that. So let me see if I can, all right. So this is an animation that's on Wikimedia Commons. Can you all see that okay? If not, I can share the link with you directly in the chat. 
So I'm gonna play this a few times. And basically what I want you to notice is, um, is there anything different from the expected rotation? So the expected rotation is on the left, the observed rotation of the galaxy is on the right. So the question is, does the observed on the right have any differences from the expected at left? I'll just play this a few times on a loop and give you time to type into the chat. All right, so for our observed galaxy at the right, it seems like the edges are orbiting faster than expected on the left. Yep, exactly. So it's a little bit hard to you know, discern any difference near the inside of the galaxy, but the outer edges of the arms are where you can notice stars are moving faster out there than they are expected to. So the rotation curve that we, exact, that we actually observe is just what you just noticed. Things that are far from the center are faster than we expect them to be. And so this rotation curve does not look like the rotation curve for our solar system anymore. So what gives? Well, if the galaxy's behavior doesn't agree with the predictions from Kepler's or Newton's models, I don't know, maybe Newton's universal law of gravity isn't so universal. Maybe Kepler's laws no longer hold. We have really no reason to believe that either of those things are true. So instead, the only possibility is that there must be some extra mass in the system to cause this higher speed, right? So higher speed means a smaller period. Um, these distances aren't changing. So if the period is smaller, then the mass has to be bigger, all right? That means there must be more mass than expected in the galaxy, in the galactic disk somewhere. And this missing mass, the reason it's missing is we don't see it. We can't account for it with visible matter because that's what we were using um, in our observations. This missing matter is called dark matter. So we think it's real mass, but for whatever reason, we can't see it. 